Greetings. I would like to welcome you to our daily weekday Mass, held here at the National Shrine of St. Therese on the Carmelite campus in Darien, Illinois. The Carmelites cherish praying and celebrating with you. This shrine is the blessing of a generous gift from the Margie and Robert Peterson Foundation. Let's please stand. Our opening hymn is number 712 in the song book. It's Come Now, Almighty King, number 712. Come now, Almighty King, help us your name to sing. Help us to praise, Father all glorious, or all victorious, come and reign over us, ancient of days. Come now, incarnate Word, who for us death endured. Our prayers attend, come and your people bless, and give your word success. Fill us with righteousness, Savior and friend, come holy comforter, your sacred witness bear in this glad hour to us your grace impart and rule in every heart, never from us depart, spirit of power. To you, O Trinity, eternal praises be forevermore. Your sovereign majesty may we in glory see, and to eternity love and adore. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning. We welcome everyone on this beautiful day to the Shrine of St. Therese as we celebrate the Eucharist this morning. We welcome all those also who are joining us uh, online, virtually, to celebrate the Mass with us today. Now, my brothers and sisters, let us prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries by calling to mind our faults and failings before the Lord. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have Christ, mercy. Have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who calls the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We have been reassured about you, brothers and sisters, in our every distress and affliction through your faith. For we now live if you stand firm in the Lord. What thanksgiving then can we render to God for you, for all the joy we feel on your account before our God? Night and day we pray beyond measure to see you in person and to remedy the deficiencies of your faith. Now, 
May God himself, our Father, and our Lord Jesus, direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all. Just as we have for you, so as to strengthen your hearts, to be blameless in holiness before our God and Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his holy ones. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. You turn men back to dust, saying, Return, O children of men, for a thousand years in your sight are as yesterday, now that it is past, or as a watch of the night. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will enjoy your glory. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on, our, on your servants. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. Fill us at daybreak with your kindness, that we may shout for joy and gladness all our days. And may the gracious care of the Lord our God be ours. Prosper the work of our hands for us. Prosper the work of our hands. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Stay awake, for you do not know when the Son of Man will come. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Stay awake, for you do not know on which day your Lord will come. Be sure of this, if the master of the house had known the hour of night when the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and not let his house be broken into. So too you also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect the Son of Man will come. Who then is the faithful and prudent steward whom the master has put in charge of his household to distribute to them their food at the proper time. Blessed is that servant whom his master on his arrival finds doing so. Amen, I say to you, he'll put him in charge of all his property. But if that wicked servant says to himself, my master is long delayed and begins to beat his fellow servants and eat and drink with drunkards, the servant's master will come on an unexpected day and at an unknown hour and will punish him severely and assign him a place with the hypocrites, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. The scripture passage we have for today's Gospel on this Thursday of the 21st week of Ordinary Time is one we usually hear at the end of the liturgical year, or maybe on the first Sunday of Advent where we are focusing on the end times, waiting for the Lord to come uh, at the end of time. And so it may seem a little jarring for us uh, at this point uh, in August to hear this particular passage. But Jesus is telling his disciples, first of all, stay awake, be alert, uh, don't become drowsy in the faith. You do not know on which day your Lord will come. I think when we think about uh, the end times, and if you hear a gospel like this, I know I don't want to be on the side where there's wailing and grinding of teeth, okay? So that alone would say, well, maybe I better listen up and see what Jesus is trying to tell us. But for most of us, well, we do not know uh, when the end of the world is going to come. Uh, we know the scriptures tell us the day will come, it will come suddenly, but uh, we don't know when. But so it's not something that most of us, I think, are terribly preoccupied with, but at the same time, we know we live each day trying to build the kingdom of God and do our share. But when we think about our individual deaths, we'll say, well, the same maxim is true there, isn't it? We don't know when the Lord is going to come. And uh, we don't know when the Lord's going to come 30, 40 years from now. We'll live to the ripe old age of 100, 
or whether something will come along and this will be our last day. And so the Lord just simply tells us, stay awake. Now, when we think about the analogy he uses, he says, you know, if you knew at what time uh, the thief was going to come rob your house in the middle of the night, okay, you'd be waiting for him with a baseball bat, right? He said you'd be, you'd be alert. Of course, this is the day before we had all these electronic gizmos that set off alarms and everything. He's usually would probably had another analogy on that. But he's basically telling us, if you knew the time, well, you'd be ready, right? One of the things we heard about uh, St. Oscar Romero, Archbishop Romero, who was assassinated and uh, certainly wasn't something he knew the day or the hour, but he had some premonition. He, he went to confession on the morning before the afternoon that he said the Mass where he was assassinated. So the Lord was looking after him. But we just ask ourselves, we do not know the day or the hour, so we have to live each day with the Lord. We wouldn't be here at Mass today if we didn't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, and that's very important for us. And so all the Lord is telling us is, well, we don't have to be afraid of the day or the hour, because we know when the Lord comes for us, he's going to recognize us, and we're going to be able to step into an eternity that the Lord has prepared, where Paul says, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor so has it much dawned upon us how much uh, God has prepared for those who love him. So with that in mind, uh, we stay awake and we prepare for the Lord. But even St. Therese said about staying awake, she had this wonderful line in her autobiography. She says, you know, I love the Blessed Mother and I really love the rosary, but I almost always fall asleep in the middle of my rosary, okay? And she says, well, I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, she says, uh, parents love their children just as much when they fall asleep as when they're awake, maybe more so, who knows, at the end of a long day. But uh, even though we want to stay awake spiritually, we know at the end of each night, like St. Therese, we can rest in the Lord. Now let us offer our prayers to our gracious God. Let's thank God for the gift of faith which has brought us to the shrine today and our opportunity to receive the Eucharist that we may never take that for granted. Uh, be ready to receive the Lord each and every day in our lives. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those people who've been so adversely affected by the fires in Hawaii and the hurricane in Florida, natural disasters throughout the world. For God's blessings on them, we pray to the Lord. We petition heaven for an end to war, particularly in the Ukraine, troubled areas of the Middle East and Africa. We pray for nonviolence in our own nation. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the sick, suffering members of our parish communities, family members, and friends who've asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. We pray today for our special intentions for the repose of the soul of Katrina Jones Benales and for birthday blessings today on Geraldine Teotico. Uh, for these intentions and all those special intentions we hold close to our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Good and loving God, we offer these prayers and petitions. Confidence you'll hear and answer our every prayer, for we make them all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, 
Bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, bred throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Therese, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let's offer each other the sign of peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Let us pray. 
Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We remind you that this coming Monday, Labor Day, will not have a Mass here at the National Shrine. So just this Monday, September 4th, for Labor Day, the Shrine will not be open. Uh, keep in mind, come September, we have the big event coming up of the Relics of St. Therese and her parents, Louis and Zelie Martin. So we're looking forward to those big days. As we close the Eucharist today, let's offer Hail Mary to our Blessed Mother. Thanksgiving for all the blessings we received and that uh, we may continue to stay awake for the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Eucharist has ended. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Our recessional hymn is in the songbook, The Spirit Sends Us Forth. And I'll give you the number here number 393, number 393. The Spirit sends us forth to serve, we go in Jesus' name, to bring glad tidings to the poor, God's favor to proclaim. We go to comfort those who mourn and set the burden free. Where hope is dim to share a dream and help the blind to see. We go to be the hands of Christ to scatter joy like seed and all our days to cherish life to do the loving deed. Then let us go to serve in peace the gospel to proclaim. God's Spirit has empowered us. We go in Jesus' name.